accept your resignation? Mm, with regret, I'm happy to say. What did she say? Come on, tell me everything. Oh, many things, but uh, most important, she offered me an earldom. Dizzy. Mm, when I told her that if I had been able to accept, I would have chosen the name Beaconsfield from our neighboring town. If you've been able to accept? Well, many people think it is my fault that we lost this election. Now Gladstone has returned with an increased majority, and I must be there in the Commons to do battle with him. Yes, yes, of course. But I'm so disappointed for you, my darling. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not disappointed at all. You see, the Queen has been graciously pleased to transfer the honor to my most trusted and constant companion, whose courage has always been my spur and whose love my inspiration. It is the greatest privilege I've ever been given to tell you that you are now, my dearest, in your own right, the Viscountess Beaconsfield. You must know why Mr. Disraeli prefers to work down here in the country, Sir Stafford. Of course. I realize that Lady Beaconsfield is unwell. Yet, as leader of the party, his place is at Westminster. We hardly ever see him at Westminster, Mr. Rose. He tells us he's working on something, but he will not say what it is. I hope it's not another book. Lothair was a sensation on both sides of the Atlantic. Mm, undoubtedly. Who had ever heard of an ex-prime minister writing a romantic novel? <laughs> Dizzy, your terraces are exquisite, but why so many peacocks? They are essential, Lady Chesterfield. Who ever heard of a terrace without peacocks? <laughs> a kind of personal symbol, do you suppose? Oh, surely not, Baron. Baron de Rothschild and Lady Chesterfield knew my Dizzy when he was not always so solemn. <laughs> the very first time I saw him, Lady Manners, he was wearing a green velvet jacket, plum-coloured trousers with gold braid, a scarlet waistcoat smothered in gold chains, and emerald rings over white gloves. I really cannot imagine it. <laughs> Young women who only know my Dizzy now think he's ugly. I don't think he's ugly at all. Oh, no, I assure you that's I think not we right. might change the subject, my dear. No, no, no. He was so striking, all the young women found him irresistible. That's very true. And out of them all, he chose me. I've never ceased to thank Providence. Well, the gratitude should be entirely on my side, my... Marianne. No. No, it's nothing. It's... It's just a little twinge I get when I don't stick to my diet. Come, come, come. I'll show you to you. I'll go and buy Monty? Monty will take me. We can't both leave our guests. Uh, I'm sure they... Everybody understands. Naturally, Why did you not warn us? Lady Beaconsfield is clearly much more ill than any of us suspected. What is it? Mary Ann is suffering from cancer of the stomach. I've known for five years. Only Monty and I know. Cannot her doctors do something? It's incurable. She does not know that I know, so to save worrying me, she pretends that her illness is slight and temporary. I've, I've no need to ask you not to say. Anything. 
Like your Marianne has had to lie down. Hmm. It is a fallen attempt to introduce the siesta to Buckinghamshire. <laughs> Have they been badgering you, Philip? Probing. More or less delicately, I would say. You should know better than to try to worm secrets out of a lawyer, especially mine. I assure you, I have no need, Northcote. I can guess your complaints exactly. I have not been writing another book. Philip and I have been discussing a plan for the total reorganization of the party. The setting up of a central office to define policy and consult with and advise local constituencies. In short, the creation of a party machine. It cannot be run from here. Which is why I am leaving for London tomorrow. We cannot let Gladstone have it all his own way. He's gaining in strength every day. No one dares stand against him. Well, I thought I might try. Hmm? Horrible scenes of violence have been occurring in Ireland, and the government never moved. Shame. Landlords were shot down. Respectable farmers beaten to death, policemen stabbed, households blown up. And still the government never moved. Yet, when a government candidate lost an election in Ireland, oh, troops were put in motion. Sent from Liverpool to Dublin. And I seem to remember, I think it was last year, one of Her Majesty's ministers saying, anyone can govern Ireland with troops and artillery. So it seems. Even the right honourable gentleman there. Making notes for my speech. Yes. Well, do so. Just pretend I'm not here. Can I? Snip, snip, snip. I feel like I've fallen into the hands of some female mini Todd. Well, you'll know what to expect then, won't you? Hmm? Oh, right. do sit still. I will not have you going to Manchester looking like some out-of-work scarecrow. No, I might not go to Manchester. Well, why not not? It's going to be the great rally of all the Conservative associations. And then there's your... Speech at the Free Trade Hall. You're only one of three monster rallies in the North, and I shall expect it at each to make a speech lasting several hours. Well, think of the effect it will make. I am thinking nowadays with my asthma, I can only stay on my feet talking if I drink brandy and water non stop. So I shall lose the churchgoers and temperance boat straight away. Oh, I know. Mm. Why don't you put white brandy in the water jug? The audience will not know anything about it. You may be Beaconsfield. You are as fair as an angel and as devious as a serpent. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's all right. I've done. May I get rid of that for you? No. no I'll do it on here. Now, Dizzy. You don't you work poor Monty too hard. Her fingers were so swollen she could scarcely hold the scissors. I thought Lady Beaconsfield seemed a little better. She will not give in. She insists on travelling to Manchester with me. Well, could you not advise against it, sir, because of the appalling weather? She will not listen. Even though I, I'm afraid the journey might prove too much for her. Well, for her own sake, sir, could you not refuse to let her go with you? How can I? Every time she hears me speak, she's afraid it will be the last. 